Since I was a kid, nature always had a deep impact on my mind as compared to anything else in my life. The warmth of sunlight from dawn, hazy grass covered with dew, cozy mood of the morning, playing cricket, football as kids. I think the joy of feeling nature inside you is much more important than just casually living in it. And the passion about being part of this humongous nature itself has really been a strong living force inside me as a kid. Imagining so many alluring landscapes, countrysides, mountains, terrains really made me proud as a human being to be part of this mighty existence. And probably every one of us might try creating these mountain sketches in school. And gladly, today we have the technology not only to draw these pictures, but to transform these mind visions into virtual reality. So, welcome everyone to my first environmental art tutorial on my YouTube channel. My name is Nishant and let's get down to the show. So we are starting with blocking out the scene. Starting to conceptualize the basic idea of vision I have in mind with primitive objects like cube, cylinder and cone. Generally, I start with gathering large number of references from Pinterest to pure rap. Then I find inspiration for new ideas. But for this art, I already had a vision in mind, which is generally similar to my previously created medieval art. So I choose to block out the composition right away in Blender. This blocking out of scene is more important to those people who are hilariously lazy to pick up the pencil and draw the idea on paper first. Especially if you are a beginner and you are struggling to conceptualize your ideas from mind to paper or in Blender, this is really gonna help you out to get the composition right in 3D with camera angle or any perception you have in mind. It will also help you to think accurately about any art in any perspective you want to create. To practice this, get 5 ideas in mind and start blocking them out today in Blender. And just keep drawing your skills by adding more complications to your scenes and step up the game every time. One thing you should really be careful about while blocking out the scene is scale. All the objects you are adding as primitive shapes should be more or less around the actual object size or it's immensely gonna affect the way you are perceiving the view from your camera angle. So here we have the very basic form of medieval house. Also set up the path with curves and experiment with it until you are satisfied with this right approach towards the house. Experiment with camera settings like perspective, focal length to maintain the overall balance ratio between flatness or broad perspective of scene. Use composition grids like rule of thirds to balance the overall composition more accurately. Once you are satisfied with the camera angle and overall entire vision of the scene, we will proceed to the next stage which is 3D modeling. Start converting all the blocks into an actual objects. Starting with the house, start separating walls and ropes from the house one by one. Then I start creating the ridges with simple cube. Add a couple of curves and adjust the overall shape of the ridge by dragging the ridge a little bit lower from the center. Adding these tiny details like how you're gonna shape the ridge or roof really affects the mood of the composition. These details may be smaller but add a bigger difference in overall composition in the end. I also kept the UV unwrapping of house alongside the modeling work because it kept things easy and made the workflow more faster to create the scene. And once the ridge is unwrapped, I just reused it by duplicating all over the house, it saved my 3D modeling time and saved a lot of trouble from unwrapping things again and again. Then I start working on principal rafters. Overall shape and position of rafters also impacts the composition of scene immensely. Then I start adding other timber blocks around the house to make the roof look properly crafted from all point of views. Grab the roof size a little bit out because it really makes the house look cool and I really love it. Now perfect time to add the tie beams on all sides of the house. Also added these metallic arrowheads on the ridges. Nothing fancy but just add a little bit point of interest and interaction in the house. Then added couple of metallic raster rings around the ridges along the house. I also UV and add them and added material instantly. Right after that I started creating cube boxes to cut out the window holes by boolean. After that, add the rest of the timber along the walls on all sides to get the overall look of the house more refined and definite. Now it's time to add windows and doors. 
So I reused the same models from my previous work and placed them all on their appropriate places. Did a little bit changes in size and finally they started to look good. Now it's time to add materials to the house. Starting with the timber, all textures are used from texture.com and links are available in the description box. I added material to one timber ridge and then just simply linked the rest of them from that one. Now due to different scale and size of each timber part, I had to rescale couple of UV and apps to get the texture scale right. Then I unwrapped the roofs and added a red color tile texture which felt really homely and suitable for the vision. Now it was time to add chimney. I added a brick texture with displacement map and looked really nice. Now time to adjust the lighting. And I'm gonna use the Nishita lighting, the most bestest, impeccable and the extraordinary tool ever added by Blender Foundation for lighting. I really loved it since the first day I have used it. So easy to use and set the environment lighting pretty quickly. It has almost killed my need to use any other HDR image for environment lighting setup. So all I'm gonna do is tweaking some values to get the sun at horizon to achieve the dawn. I'm really a big fan of dawn and dusk lighting, its warmth is just priceless. After setting up the lighting, now it's time to add 3 important details to the house. Weathering, degradation and the deterioration. And we're gonna use texture painting for that. Started painting grunges along the rafters, tie beams and the collars first. All the grunges textures available on textures.com and the links are in description box. All the types of grunges, cracks and the worn out wall paints Add very noticeable characteristics to your house. Adding watermarks along the timber framing tells what kind of atmospheric effects environment has in most. And the worn out structure, cracks on walls overall speaks about the deterioration process of the house throughout the age due to all environmental conditions. And finally, house started to give exact look I had in mind with grunges and cracks on all over the walls of the house. But the ground feels quite empty. So, now it's time to add a soil material to the ground. Apply the soil texture, adjusted the UV scales couple of times, also played with normals and berms to bring out the details appropriately, used texture paint again to paint the path on the ground, and overall look started to appeal. But the ground feels quite flat, just like I had in my previous medieval art. Looks good but surface needed couple of bumps in background, also added couple of footmarks in the path to make ground feel connected with the living and everything just coming up good. Now time to throw some secondary details into the scene which really gonna make the scene feel more alive, humane and medieval. Starting with importing the well into the scene. Experimented with the position a little while and see where it feels good and do the same with the rest of the objects until it starts to feel good. Then started piling up the details layer by layer. It's always good to have the idea to know where you're gonna put the objects in your scene because they have direct impact on your scene composition and everything started to feel good with the placement but the background was too empty to retain eyes just in the scene so I added a fence which really worked pretty well as usual and scene almost starting to feel great with the lighting now time to throw some vegetation so here I have my own grass package made completely from scratch for my own projects First, I simply applied the grass to a plane and then transferred all particles data to ground plane where I wanted to add grass and saved my wrist from carpal syndrome. Did couple of tweaks in particles number and scale with all the layers and the grass finally results are really great. It started to feel realistically breathtaking and fresh with sunlight but the entire grass kind of felt too clean, too smooth and green without any imperfection like heavenly grass. So I decided to add other vegetational details into the grass. Started with flowers and it really impacted the perception immediately. Added broken branches both in grass field and the path. I placed every branch manually and it really added a lot more depth to the grass field. Awesome! Now it's time to add the dead leaves into the scene. Added leaves to the path, grass field which really added a lot more realism to the geology of the environment. I also put couple of dead leaves around the well and also on the roof of the house which really looks great. Even after adding fans, sky is still feeling way infinite and empty from the behind. 
so I decided to throw a couple of grass planes in the background with bumps along with broken branches, which really fits nicely with the overall composition of the scene and makes the background more believable and interesting a little bit. But still something important and casual just felt missing and that were the stones. I placed them very carefully in the scene. I always place things with my own judgment following my heart. And I think they really felt great with the placement. Placement of things always have a story behind them. So just keep that in mind whenever you're gonna place any stuff into your scene. Now time to add the biggest object of the scene, the trees. Which I created using M3 add-on. You will find the link in description box. It's really an impressive piece of tool. It's not based system and it really works amazingly. Then I made few trees and placed them right in the back of the house. So after placing trees behind the house, scene came out really well. I had all the renders piled up in the slots layer by layer. I also added couple of texture based crows in grass and on the roof. And all of these things contributed together to render my vision into this beautiful medieval house scene. Lighting really felt great, properly diffused. I simply used filmic color management as an output. Ground simply came out very nicely with dead leaves and branches. And results definitely looking great. If you like the content, please like the video and share with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so then you don't miss any upcoming future videos. You can also follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Outstation. If you have something to say, feel free to leave in the comment section. I will get to that as soon as I possibly can. So thanks for watching, stay safe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.